I feel it. There was no improvement this morning. Can't say anything right now, I mean. You picked up a virus somewhere? Like, that's... Let's just see how you get on. Yeah. And if you don't race, you don't race. First race of the season 2023. Rwanda isn't the typical destination. Go cycling, at least not yet. I'm going there for something like three weeks to combine both racing and bikepacking beforehand and afterwards, after the race, um, to have the chance and the opportunity to, to see a bit more of the country. The race around Rwanda is one of the most unique events in one of the most unique countries. Rwanda is actually one what the normal European will not have on the agenda for cycling at all. They've got these like perfect tarmac roads all over the place. It's a beautiful country to be able to ride in and it's such a pleasure to be here. Kigari, it's an amazing city, it's a peaceful country. The people are very enthusiastic when they see you on a bike, so kids will cheer on, even adults, they will cheer you on when you're suffering in the middle of a climb. They will push you up the hill uh, by words or literally sometimes. It's just such a rewarding experience to ride here. Cycling for the people in Rwanda is mostly not a sport but it's a way of moving, it's, it's part of their daily life. They move a lot of goods on the bikes. They carry everything from 20 kilos of bananas to I've seen people carry a motorbike on the back of a bicycle, I've seen people carry goats, I've seen people carry a whole bed frame plus the mattress on the bike. And then you're suffering on your fancy carbon bike on going up a hill and these guys would then pass you while you are just trying to just reach the summit. So they're strong, they're very strong. Irushanwa Rizenguruka Ejihugu Churguanda. The race around Rwanda is um, organized by Simon since uh, since three years now. This year we'll see something like 150 participants on the on the start line and it is uh, constantly growing. The race around Rwanda is an ultra race, a thousand kilometer, um, which puts it in a short end of races, but it's 40%, uh, so 400 kilometers of gravel and 17,000 meters of elevation gain. It's a tough race, but because of the way Rwanda is, even though it's a very, um, let's say, exotic country, it's a very safe and nice place to ride so even though it's a very hard course i think it's a very good way to to experience the country and also ultra cycling as a sport why ultra cycling why are you so I got into ultra cycling uh, back in 2019 and um, was uh, looking for some Gran Fondo like races, it's like 160k, 200k a day. And the only thing I found which was nearby um, was a race called Trans Pyrenees and um, it was uh, 950 kilometers long, a bit longer. Um, then uh, I was looking for a long race, but it sounds interesting and um, I signed up for it. In the end, uh, I finished winning it and um, the organizers were quite um, surprised and uh, told me like, yeah, you never did this before, you had no experience. And I was like, yeah, no, I was just, I was just riding my bike. Well, since then, in, uh, in the last years, um, I did 16 ultra long distance races. So now I have quite some experience and uh, 
I kind of uh, got addicted to it. So initially when we started Race Around Rwanda, we just wanted to host a race. And then we realized people living in Rwanda actually don't have gravel bikes. Rwanda is a cycling country, has a history of cycling, but road cycling. So then we realized no Rwandan would be able to start their own race. Rwanda Beyond is a, a team comprised by six people. I am on one girl and five guys. They help us to do different races, gravel races, uh, bikepacking events here in Rwanda and out of Rwanda. For some cyclists, they, we, we didn't get some chance to performing good because of, there is no investment for to help the cyclists reach our dreams. First time I was riding, but it was my trial. It's my first time to riding the long distance. I didn't have any experience for it. I didn't have any GPS. I didn't, I didn't have right. I did have a lot of kit for bicycle. Even bicycle, I was using the road race. That's crazy that you did it on a road bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's wild. We started Rwanda Beyond first because we wanted to give Rwandans to start their own race. So we contacted brands, trying to look for gravel bikes, trying to look for uh, shoes, all the tools, lights, bikepacking bags, and this kind of things. But it grew from that into more social projects. What we want to do now is really also showing people in Rwanda that cycling is also adventure, that cycling is not just racing bike, it's not just doing crazy stuff, but also bikepacking, going on Sunday afternoon gravel rides. So that's something we also want to show. How are you feeling? Not that well. Fever is uh, up again at uh, 38 something. Feeling a bit like hit by a truck. Let's see the doctor. On Tuesday evening, I went to bed healthy and happy and woke up a few hours later and um, felt a bit hot. And um, it turned out um, I had fever. We went to a hospital on Wednesday morning um, to do a full checkup to be sure I don't have like tropical diseases or something. It was probably the best consultation at a doctor that I ever get. She was sitting down with me like explaining every value into the last detail what it means in general and what's her like interpretation of it. There was nothing nothing serious like bacteria or virus or stuff detected in the blood so I'm just sick. Well in the end she said yeah you are sick you have fever go to bed stay there rest up and it will be soon fine. Wednesday was was really really bad with uh, with high fever um, at uh, 39 degrees. Now it's uh, it's getting mentally tough because there was no improvement this morning. Hopefully it's just 48 hours out. Yeah. First day was uh, was already a bit better. Friday was the same like Thursday, no real improvement. And um, today we have uh, we have Saturday. Um, the day before the race. I'm packing now all my stuff that I take with me. Today the temperature is for the first time back to normal um, at uh, 36 degrees something. Today the decision has to be made if I can line up on the start tomorrow morning at, at 4.30 a.m. It's been a very stressful week here in Rwanda, um, not knowing if Ulrich is going to start the race. What I will learn here is my capabilities of riding after being sick the week before the race. Yeah. 
Normally I have pretty good confidence that I can solve every problem that, that will come to me. But now for, for the first time I miss this confidence because I don't know how much I can rely on my body. And that's a bit tricky to, to deal with and that's a bit tricky to bring up the motivation you need to ride that far. You pointed the camera to my notebook and um, there is a big sticker on it which says there is no hurry we shall get there someday could be maybe the uh, the motto for for the race it's not the normal feeling i have on the day before a race normally i'm like totally chilled i know how how far i can go or i know um, how to how to read the signs if uh, the health situation stays like it is if I wake up tomorrow morning with uh, the same temperature like now I never experienced something like this before this kind of uncertainty how I can rely on on my body. Ten minutes to go, so I guess it's time to feel good. In the early morning, 4.30 a.m., nobody would uh, start at 4.30 a.m. Just, just for fun. You need to have a very special personality um, to, to sign up for this kind of races. You know, you share the same passion with all the people there and you are all there because of the same reason if you want to uh, go on this adventure. Uh, I feel good. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Ready to race? Yes, of course. Amazing. The first stretch was uh, 70 kilometer tarmac something. So there was, uh, was a big group, like a peloton rolling together. So before people hit the first gravel, the sun is warming them up and it's really, I think, a very special way of starting a race. The first bigger gravel section started and it was about yeah, 100 kilometer long, I guess. And it was really impressive because it was a beautiful grassland, a really amazing landscape and uh, I even thought uh, in Rwanda they have better gravel roads than somewhere in Europe we have uh, tarmac roads. We arrived at the first checkpoint with an average of uh, more than 31 kilometers an hour. So it was quite a uh, good pace, yeah. Right after checkpoint one, the race was, was pretty much on. Everyone left with a difference of like a few seconds. Like some went uh, to, to refill water and like it takes a few seconds and then it, um, it splits up a bit. And I took this uh, as a chance as well to just escape from the group. So there was more climbing involved and um, I found quite a good rhythm and uh, soon I was uh, in front of the race. Heading towards checkpoint two, um, the gravel changed a lot, so I learned uh, Rwanda has not only the perfect smooth, fast rolling gravel, but also some rough stuff. On the tailback it was beautiful, but on the gravel sectors, you're literally in the back of this pickup, just being like thrown around for hours and like trying to like hold in a gimbal, just like 
Something about this race as well, we don't have a set route. We have a similar route every year, but the routes change here. It's not just because we want to change it, it's just because the country is developing so quickly. Gravel roads become tarmac roads, single track become gravel roads. You can actually do it every year and every year you have a very different experience. The more we got into the hills, into the mountains, um, it got more and more green with more and more trees. There was a huge lake. It felt a bit like a fjord with huge arms and islands in the middle. It was looking a bit surreal, but really, really beautiful. And um, I totally enjoyed the climb up there and the winding gravel roads um, going back down. I took some notes before the race where the gravel section starts and where it ends. And um, obviously I did a wrong note, so I expected a much shorter gravel section. If you have in mind going for a 20 or 30 kilometer gravel section and then it lasts for ages and it's not over after 50, 60, 70 kilometers, then it gets, it gets harder than it, it actually is. All of the sudden, the, the gravel I saw it it will change to tarmac in like 50 meters and it was like wow and yeah i had it uh, onto the tarmac and uh, did did a little celebration it was uh, feeling like uh, like winning the stage how's that last gravel section i was rough and tough a little celebration coming onto the tarmac then yeah i was waiting for it to change Yeah, I was uh, I was super happy um, reaching checkpoint two um, at sunset. So I was there at uh, at six thirty. Uber was smashing it. He came in first to checkpoint two, around ten minutes ahead of the other riders, which was really good for us. Uh, people was looking really good for him. And you are pleased to know your first in Thank to you. checkpoint two. Thank uh, you. So that's amazing. How's it been so far? Pretty hot, pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, everything hurts and it's exhausting. But in general, it's just a bike ride. When I left uh, checkpoint two and had the first look onto my Garmin, um, it told right from leaving checkpoint two, the next 17 kilometers will be a climb. And I was like, no way. What? You're kidding me. A 17 kilometer uphill. See what you got in? After checkpoint two, we took off. We followed him for around five, six kilometers. We left him, basically sleep for a few hours, and then head off and find him at 3 a.m., wherever, wherever he was going to be. And then I'd woken up around 11.30 just to check my phone, and he'd send me a voice note. <coughs> oh, I guess, I guess that's it. I just, just completed highest point of the race, 3,000 meter of altitude, I guess. This finally killed my lungs. I'll try to continue like for the next 10 kilometers, but I don't know if it will be healthy to, to ride another 24 hours. So 
thanks for catching me. Heartbroken, I don't know. We are well done, mate. Well done, mate. I felt good the first day, like pretty much until until midnight or something. The problem was that. My lungs were probably already a bit bit hit before and then I spent nothing else than inhaling nice and red scent all day. Probably the <laughs> the altitude training wasn't wasn't helpful. I took it easy, I thought. Yeah, it's cold. Don't overdo it. And when I arrived at the bottom and tried to start paddling, <laughs> I felt like there is no oxygen coming to the muscles anymore. Then the rider who, is, who was chasing me just passed me like a rocket. <laughs> he was doing a good pace and I was just like completely cracked. I did one more climb, four kilometers. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, and I simply had not enough oxygen to, to do so. Let's get you to bed. Yeah. It's always a hard, a very, very hard decision um, to, to end the race like this. I arrived, I was covered in tears. I was super disappointed and super heartbroken because the chance to see more of the route was taken from me. After having finished earlier than expected, I'm back in, in better spirits and thinking about uh, to go back out again and simply ride the rest of the route as, um, as a bikepacking tour. The race around Rwanda was or is one of the most unique events um, I did in one of the most unique countries. I was super happy that I was able um, to start at all and I was super happy about every kilometer I did on the on the first 24 hours um, in the race. Nature, landscape, people, culture, this was a very special um, experience to me and it created a lot of a lot of good memories. I learned a lot about myself, about how to listen to my body, about being patient, about how to mentally and physically handle the challenge to be sick and bad for four days and start a race right afterwards. And that is what it's all about. Gain experience, take away the essentials and improve. I can look back and remind myself I mastered the challenge in Rwanda so I can master the next one as well and even better.